Good afternoon, YouTube. We are live. And today we are talking about using theatrical grease paint makeup for cosplay. Um, uh, if you watched my first video, I talked about the tools I like to use. And in this video, I'm going to give a little bit of uh, techniques of how to work with grease paint. Um, I mentioned that I've, I've talked to a lot of cosplayers who say that they don't like or don't want to use grease paint because they tried it once and it um, it never it never dried it never uh, it was smeared all over the place they had problems with it so I think they just don't know how to use theatrical grease paint properly so in this video we're going to look at some of the techniques for working with theatrical grease paint the grease paint that um, I work with most is a Mayron product. Um, it's their theatrical grease paint, or this is their clown, clown white grease paint for clowns, and this is their foundation grease paint makeup. It comes in a variety of colors. Uh, so when I'm working with the grease paint, what I like to do to begin with is I'll use uh, my makeup brush and the back, the handle of the brush, I'll use this as a scoop to get the makeup makeup out of the container. So I'm not just sticking my fingers in and uh, touching all of the makeup. I'll take the back of the uh, brush and just get a glob of the makeup and then I will work it onto the back of my hand and off of the brush. Now this is um, the makeup that I will uh, be working with. Um, the grease paint, sometimes if, if it's a cold day, cold weather, can uh, get a little stiff. So being in contact with my hand will actually warm up the makeup and soften it a bit. Uh, it's in the 70s today, so I don't think that that's going to be a big problem. Um, my main tool for working with uh, grease paint is my hand. If I'm working with a, a large area, a finger, two fingers, or, or even like several fingers, like you cover your whole face, um, use your whole hand. There's, you don't have to just like do a little tiny area to try and color your whole face in. If I'm doing detailed work, a makeup brush, just a small brush, uh, works well to get in uh, fine lines and details that are uh, more precise than what my hand can do. So I just start with the makeup and put it on my finger And just work it onto my face. Take a little more. Now, I've never used uh, my video monitor is my mirror, so we'll see how well this works and if I can Tell what I'm doing. So uh, once you get the, the makeup on, if you pat it with your finger, it will even it out so it's a little bit smoother. Pick up any of the areas where you put too much and deposit a little bit more in the, the areas that need more. Right now the makeup is wet. This is a damp cloth. And if I took this damp cloth and 
the makeup comes off. It's it's still wet. It's still um, able to be removed easily. Now, if I want to change colors of the makeup, um, depending on what I'm doing, sometimes I will set this makeup. And to set it, I use baby powder. Um, I just keep it in a Rubbermaid container uh, that's easy to work with my uh, powder puff. Um, if I set the makeup, when I uh, move on to the next color, the colors will not bleed and blend into each other. If I want to be able to blend the colors together, I work with it um, without powdering. And this is considered working with the makeup wet. So if I take a second color of the makeup and just, again, put a little bit on the back of my brush, work it onto the back of my hand to get as much of the makeup off the brush as possible. Now, when I work with this second color, but this is brown. If I go next to the white, the two colors can blend together to create a smoother edge. If I think uh, that's a little bit darker than I wanted it, I can just go back to the white and work the white into the color. to create the shade that I'm looking for. When working with the makeup, I usually choose to start with the lighter colors first. Um, if I'm going to do an intricate design around the eye, um, that's the one exception. I will do the eyes first since sometimes it's a little harder to get into the eye area without also touching the surrounding skin. So if I'm trying to get the colors in the eye, it's different from the surrounding. I'll do the eyes first. You see, I'm just using my finger.
All right. So if I wanted to continue, usually I'll do the the black and white highlights and uh, outlining last, and I'll do that after I powdered the makeup. So see if I can powder it at my computer without making a huge mess. So I'm just getting a dusting of uh, powder on my face and not. <clears throat> really. Uh, met changing the makeup or pushing the powder into the face at first. Now I can go back. Make sure the powder. Is pressed in everywhere. It's like giving yourself a uh, facial massage. Should sure get all of the creases around your nose, your eyes. Um, you don't have to wait. The the makeup is dry once you it's powdered, so you just can. Remove it, the excess powder. And you can see as I'm doing this, the makeup isn't spreading, it isn't smearing. So the makeup is, for the most part, dry. So it's like if I take the cloth I used at the beginning it's not wiping the makeup away. So the the makeup has it's, it's set. It's 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 on there um, it is going to stay there for the duration of the day until I'm ready to take it off. Um, but as I said, I, I like to do um, some of the colors after it's been powdered. This will help them from uh, blending in so that I can create a cleaner edge to the color. So I'm just going to take a little... Uh, red, and I'm going to mix it with some of the white just to give, make it more of a pink color. And I just mix it on my hand until I get the color that I'm looking for. Your little highlight. Now, one of the advantages of since the makeup has been set. Might need to use uh, my mirror for this a bit.
I can paint over it uh, with with this to brush and it will create a fine line. It's going down on top of the first layer instead of blending in to the makeup. So it's a little bit cleaner. So with the black, I'm usually trying to get a little bit uh, more fine details. So I um, I use the brush and set my fingers for most of it. And then use the back of the brush for the little dots. Since it's a dog, just go with a little bit rougher edge. You would, uh, look as if it's fur. Um, I like to do a little accent and highlights, so I always end off with 
white last. Can touch up spots. Once again, uh, it's not complete until you powder it to set the uh, the last layer of makeup. I don't need quite as much powder as the first time since I um, only added a little area. So And once again, brush the excess powder off. Now, if I'm going to take pictures right away with the makeup, I will uh, take a little bit more time. Uh, sometimes I'll use a hair dryer to further brush any of the excess powder off because in photography, the powder um, will reflect more light. Uh, but if I'm going to a cosplay convention or it's gonna be for a Halloween haunt or something and I have to drive there, um, the hour in the commute, any of the powder that's uh, left in the face after basically brushing it will be um, ab absorbed into the skin, into the makeup or will blow away over time. Um, so it's like if I'm going to an event, I'll leave any of the excess powder on. That will help the makeup stay set. But if I'm going to do photography right away, I will uh, clean off as much of the uh, excess powder as possible before taking pictures. Um, and then if I'm going to go somewhere afterwards, I will, again, I will repowder just a light coat just to help the makeup last a little bit longer. Uh, I have oily skin, so after two, three hours, the oils in my skin start to reactivate the makeup. So I was like, if it's a hot summer day, I'm at a convention. I bring my powder with me and I will just uh, step into the restroom and powder my face again. And that will set the makeup. But as you can tell, the makeup is set. It's not smearing. It's not rubbing off. It's not going anywhere. Um, yes, if I uh, did all my neck and, back, uh, and, and stuff, um, at the end of the day, when I take the clothes off, I will have some ring around the collar of the makeup that rubbed onto the clothes that's really unavoidable um, with any type of makeup that I know of. But grease paint makeup can be your friend. It just takes some time to uh, learn how to use it. So hope you enjoyed that demonstration of creating a dog face <laughs> using... Uh, Mayron's theatrical uh, foundation grease paint. So hope you enjoyed it and you learned some techniques. Thanks for watching.